Hi students, I am Chakrabarti. I have been training students preparing for various competitive exams almost for the last 23 years. And uh, more than 13,000 of my students are working in various banks and other central government organizations or departments across India. Now, all our courses are available with the SWTL Academy, Smart Way to Learn. You can download the mobile app from Google Play Store and have all my courses there on SWTL Academy's uh, mobile app. Hi, good evening. Uh, today I am going to discuss one question from seating arrangement. See friends, seating arrangement is such an important chapter for you. Almost in every competitive exam they are asking questions from this chapter. And if you just observe the questions in uh, recent competitive exams, recent in the sense almost for the last 4 to 5 years, uh, they change the pattern drastically. Before 4 or 5 years, question used to be very simple from this chapter. Even of course at that time also, there used to be questions from this chapter, but questions were very fair. They used to give in this way, suppose for example, eight persons are there, seated around a circular uh, table or any rectangular table or square table and generally they used to give that all are facing center. But after that, uh, they have uh, changed the pattern and they have increased the difficulty level and now how they are giving the questions, not only the places we need to find out, we need to find out, uh, uh, we need to solve the puzzle based on other parameters also. Like they may give in this way, now very recently asked competitive exams, they are asking the questions in this way, suppose 8 persons are there, seated around a circular table and they give that some are facing inside, some are facing outside and again they give the professions for 8 people, 8 different professions they may give. And again they are giving the relationship among the eight people. So now to solve this type of puzzle, you should be thorough with the seating arrangement, then uh, puzzle test, then blood relations. If you know the basics of all three, definitely you are able to do this one. Even though the difficulty level is increased, if you attempt in a proper manner, all the questions can be solved and this type of puzzles can be easily unraveled. And another advantage with this one is most of the students, many students who are appearing uh, competitive exams uh, are not able to solve this type of questions because while, while solving the puzzle, they are not approaching in a proper way. That's the reason why some links are missing. When some link is missing or links are missing, definitely you are not able to unravel the puzzle. I'll give you. Anyway, we are going to take up uh, uh, this chapter separately. Seating arrangement, basic level questions I'll give you later. But this question is very good question taken from a uh, very recently conducted competitive exam. First what we are going to do, this is very difficult to write on the paper but somehow write on the board but somehow I managed to do this one. What I do, I just read out the question for you then uh, I'll be out of the screen. Then what you need to do, you need to write down the question if possible, right? Or pause the video so that what happens you can understand the question properly then you can start it. Right, for your purpose, I'm reading this one and what I'm going to do, I'm going to type this question also. I'll type this question below my video and uh, like while watching the video, about this video, some description is there. In that description, I'm going to type this one for your convenience. Anyway, just make a note of this question. The question says like this, uh, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R and S are seated around a circle at equal distances, not necessarily in the same order. Some are facing inside, some are facing outside. This is very important. You see, we don't even know the number who are facing inside, how many are facing outside. The next one is, uh, O sits third to the right of L. Both O and L face the same direction. Only three people sit between P and M. P is neither an immediate neighbor of L nor O. Then M faces outside. R sits to the immediate left of M. Q sits to the immediate right of N, neither L nor O is an immediate neighbor of N. Then both the immediate neighbors of M face the opposite direction. Then S sits second to the right of R, both R and Q are, both R and Q 
face the same direction as S. Finally, P faces a direction opposite to that of N. This is the question. Alright, hope you like read the question properly. Just pause the video and read the question. After that, how to attempt this one. I'll give you the best out of best methods to go for seating arrangement. As I told you, when we take up the basic level, we will discuss it in a detailed manner, but how to attempt this question. All right. First thing is, if in the given question, in the given question, first uh, find out uh, how many persons are there. If the number of persons in the given question is an uh, odd number, okay, you need to start the question by taking circle. Because when odd number of persons are there, what happens, and you cannot determine who is opposite to whom. That's the reason why even if you take the circle also, it doesn't matter. Suppose five persons are there seated around a circular table, we can take randomly one, two, three, four, five in this way. What if they give even number? Even number is a little advantageous for us because when even number of persons are there, we can definitely determine who is opposite to whom. For that reason, it is better to take uh, lines for that one. Suppose uh, eight persons are there. I may take in this way. Eight are there, right? These two are opposite. These two, these two and these two. Suppose six persons are there. We can take like this. Ten are there. Add up two opposite to each other. Twelve are there. Two, two opposite to each other. In two sets, I am going to take. Got the clarity? Right. Now, in this question, they have given eight persons. They have given eight persons. Let us start the question in this way. Now, eight persons are there seated around a circular table. Take in this way. All right. Now, very clearly, these two are opposite. These two are opposite. These two, these two and these two. All right. And right and left is very important for you. If this person is facing outside, this is right side, this is left side. The same person is facing inside, this will be right side and that will be left side of the person. So now, take up this question. Total 8 persons are there. The first information you see, O sits third to the right of L. I cannot start the question with this information because starting with which information is very very important in this type of questions. So, O sits third to the right of L means O's position is depending upon that of L's position and first of all I don't know where to keep L and I don't know which direction L is looking at. Keep this information as the buffer information. Then go for the next one. Both O and L face the same direction. Even this information also not useful for me at this moment. Keep it aside. Next one. Only three people sit between P and M. What's the meaning of this one? When eight persons are given, only three people are between two persons means these two persons must be seated on opposite places. Opposite places means it does not mean that uh, both are looking at each other but the places should be opposite. For example, one person is here, other person is here irrespective of the direction they are looking at because eight persons are there and uh, three persons are between any two persons means uh, these two persons must be seated on opposite places. Remember this one. Next, even I cannot start this one but only one thing I can say P and M are on the opposite places. Then P is uh, neither an immediate neighbor of L nor O. Even I cannot start with the, this one. See, they give the questions in this way. Now, go for the next one. M faces outside. R sits to the immediate left of M. This is a very good information to start with. Now, I can start with this one. And after starting this one, you should take all the information related to this one without leaving a single information. How to take this one now? M faces outside. Where shall I take M? That is up to you. Since it is a circle, any place you want you can take. But I suggest you when one person is facing outside, it is better to take here because this person's right is R right, left is R left. It is a little convenient for us. I am taking M here. All right. Now, what are the related information here? Next one is very related information. They have given in the third one. R sits to the immediate left of M. Now, this is M. Right side, left side, it must be R. This place is confirmed. And the other one we can take here. Only three people sit between P and M. What's the meaning of that one? As we have discussed just now, this is M. 
it must be P either on the right side or on the left side three persons are seated between P and M okay this is over then after that is there any other information which is related to this one friends I am telling you because I have been teaching this subject for quite a long time more than 16 17 years I have seen the students how they do after taking some information before like uh, squeezing out the information don't go for the other clue try to utilize the clue to the maximum extent how to use this one to the maximum extent right so now you here you see we have another related information what is that one about L and O you see here where they have given here so P is uh, neither an immediate neighbor of L nor O they have given why shouldn't I use this one now P is not an immediate neighbor of L or O. I cannot keep L here or I cannot keep O here. Alright. Even in this case, L cannot be here. O cannot be here. Alright. Next, don't leave this one. Don't leave this one. About L and O, we have another information. What is that one they have given here? O sits third to the right of L. See, I'll give you one technique here. Total 8 places are there. Out of 8 places, 1, 2, 3 are filled up. Means the, these 3 places are not suitable for L, R, O. And 2 more places are gone for L, R, O. Means what does it mean? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Out of 5 places, out of 8 places, 5 places are gone for L, R, O. Or L and O. Where shall I keep L and O? In the remaining 3 places only? By chance, by chance. Out of the remaining three places, if you are able to eliminate one place, you can go for one conclusion that out of three, one is eliminated. The rest of the two places must be given to L, R, O according to the given condition. Hope you got the idea. Total eight places, five are gone for L and O and three are remaining. Out of three, if you can like eliminate one place, remaining two places must be given to L, R, O, R, O, R, L. Mutually that can be changed, right? So this is the way of elimination process. Now go for this one. What are the three places available for L and O? One, two, three. But what is the condition here? The condition here that O sits third to the right of L. Suppose if I keep L here, maybe seeing outside or inside, third place should be given to O. 1, 2, 3. No, no scope, no place for O here. So if L is here, O cannot be here. Suppose L is here, 1, 2, 3. I can place O here. Means what does it mean? These two places are okay for if L is here, O is here. Alright. Next, suppose, what if I keep L here, L is here, 1, 2, 3, O cannot be here, but L is here, 1, 2, 3, O can be here. So, L can be here or here, this is the elimination process. Next, what if I keep L here, 1, 2, 3, O cannot be here. If I keep L here, 1, 2, 3, O cannot be here, means what does it mean? This place is not feasible for L here. Correspondingly for O. Means suppose if L is here, I cannot keep O anywhere here. So it cannot be. Even if I keep O here also, 1, 2, it cannot be L. 1, 2, 3, this one. It cannot be L. Means what does it mean? This place is not suitable for L or O. Now here, only two places are there. How can I distribute these two places, right? Suppose L is here. O should be here. There is no other place. Suppose L is here, O must be here, this one. What's the meaning of this one? This place must be given to O or L. This should be given to L or O. This is very, very important technique in seating arrangement while solving high level seating arrangement questions. Now elimination should be in this way. Now successfully what we have done, M is confirmed, R is confirmed, P is confirmed, more or less O and L are confirmed. This is the way. Now, what's the other one? Shall we use this one? Both O and L face the same direction. No, I cannot take this one now. Now, keep it aside for some time. I'm keeping it aside. Then finally, I concluded that L R O O R L. Now, let's move to the next one. M faces outside already. We have taken this one. Q sits to the immediate right of N. Another important clue here. Q sits immediate right of N. What's the meaning of that one? 
Q and N should be neighbors to each other, right? So where is the possibility for neighbors to each other? I am taking it out, right? Neighbors means uh, only these two places are left out. Means what does it mean? These two places must be given to, must be given to N R Q. Now it is Q R N. I don't have any other place for that. Got it? So now all the places are filled up, right? Filled up in the sense not confirmed, but more or less that is okay. Then this is the only place left out. Who is left out one here? L M N O P Q R N D S. So now S is remaining. I am keeping S. This is the place for S. Hope you understood this one, right? This is the way to attempt the advanced level questions in seating arrangement here. Successfully, I have avoided to go for second possibility, second arrangement. In one arrangement, I'm going to keep this one. Next one. What's the next information they have given? Uh, neither L nor O is an immediate neighbor of N. Now, very clear information you see. This place must be given to O or L. Neither L nor O is an immediate neighbor of N. What's the meaning of this one? This place is not given, not, it should not be given to N. Then who is left out now? It must be given to Q and it must be given to N here. With the condition that, with the condition that uh, Q sits to the immediate right side of N. Now Q must be sitting immediate right side of N. So N must be facing inside. If N is facing inside, Q should be on the immediate right. So this is also we got. All right. Then go for the next information. Neither L nor O. This is over. Both the immediate neighbors of M face the opposite directions. What's the meaning of this one? Both the immediate neighbors of N fa M face the opposite direction means if this person is facing outside, this person should be facing inside or vice versa or vice versa. Then go for the next one. Both the immediate neighbors over. S sits second to the right of R. Now here S sits second to the right side of R. When S should be second to the right of R, R must be facing inside. Only then I can say S should be second to the right of R. Got the clarity? Right? This step by step you need to unravel the puzzle. Now you see another important information. We should not forget this one. Just now we have read out that immediate neighbors of M face opposite directions. Now when this person is inside, this person must be facing outside. Facing outside. Now what difference does it make? No, not the question of making difference. What clue can I get from this one? Very clearly this place should be given to either O or L. Suppose if I keep L here facing outside O should be third to the right of L. This is what we have read it as the first information. O should be third to the right of L. Now if I keep keep L here O should be third right. L is facing outside if I keep L here first second third there is no place for O. This is already occupied by P. What's the conclusion here? I cannot keep a L here. It must be given to O and it should be given to L. Alright, now this is outside, this is inside, O should be on the third right of L. So on the third, third right of L means L must be facing outside. Only then I can go for this condition, I can fulfill this condition. Now this is also over. See, we are on the verge of the closing the puzzle, unraveling the puzzle. This is the best out of the best ways, right? Then go for the next information, what exactly they have given here. L and O, this is over, opposite directions over. S is second to the right of R over. Both R and Q face the same direction as S they have given. Both R and Q face the same direction as S they have given. Now let us go for this information here. Now both R and Q, R and Q face the same direction as S. What's the meaning of this one? R, Q and S, all the three must be facing the same direction. Out of the three persons, I have the direction of R. Now R and Q should face inside along with the S of course. Now the final information they have given P faces the direction opposite to that of N. Now P faces the direction opposite to that of N. This is how we need to go for the question. Right? Students, hope you understood this one. I am going to give you many many questions based on this type of 
logics, right? This question is taken from very recently conducted competitive exams. Nowadays, how they are doing? They are not stopping here. It's not a very, very difficult question, of course, right? For, like I choose this question to make you understand how exactly you need to unravel the puzzle. But uh, nowadays, how they are giving the questions, not only the directions, not only the places, but they are asking questions based on their positions or the relationship among them, as I told you. We will do one by one in this way, right? And this one means after this question, you must have learned two, three very important things in that one. How to start the question, with which information I have to start that one, how not to miss out even a single information. Over a period of time, go on practicing the question. Over a period of time, definitely you are able to do this type of questions. Anyway, I am going to give you the basics of puzzle, basics of the seating arrangement, basics of this blood relations very soon but this question is worth a worthful question and I hope you might have you must have understood this question right thank you very much I'll meet you with the another concept or any other difficult question in the next video thank you for watching the video